and uh, welcome to the August 8th, 2013 uh, Longview City Council meeting. Glad y'all are here on this nice hot afternoon and uh, I think it's the hottest one we've gotten yet and uh, it sure is nice and cool in here, so glad we're inside today. Uh, the prayer and pledge will be led by Minister Larry Lee of the West Loop 281 Church of Christ. Would y'all please stand? Shall we pray? Most holy and wonderful God, we just thank you for all of your rich blessings. Thank you for being God that looks down upon us and blesses us with your grace and mercy. At this time, we ask that you be with uh, this gathering and be with our city council and those who are leading this. Bless them with wisdom, that Father, that they will lead in a way that pleasing your sight, that will be a betterment for our, our city, our country, uh, and our nation. We ask, Father, that you just bless them with wisdom, that those things and uh, that they have agenda on, that they will uh, be led in the way uh, that will be b the best for the people and also for your glory. Thus, thank you, Father, for all your rich blessing for allowing us to live in a country that has the freedom and, and those things in which you blessed us with. Again, we ask for your blessing and your mercy upon this gathering. These and other blessing in Jesus' name we do pray. Let us all say amen. amen. Mm -hmm. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, individual with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor, Pastor, anybody ever tell you got a resemblance, a resemblance of uh, Julius Irvin? <laughs> I thought when I Dr. looked over there, Dr. Dr. J, but Dr. J was in the house. <laughs> Thank you for coming. He does. He does have a resemblance of, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Citizen comment, uh, I've got some a couple of speaker cards, but they're for the um, zoning items, so I'm going to hold those, but I do have a speaker card from Ms. Dora Bennett. Good afternoon, Ms. Bennett. Good evening. My name is Dora Bennett. I stay at 1100 South 14th Street. Y'all did, uh, on the right side, coming this way, y'all did the job over there. The water is still coming on my side. And since the other side real nice, this water come up. It ain't uh, like going in the ditch. When it come in the ditch, it go up, then come over. The, oh, the other part that the driveway, uh, if you come out there, you'll find that the, when the water come up, it done sunk the cement part. I said, by that low. My part is sinking. The water still come up, not over. If they had got this side, the water would have came right in the, on my side. But it don't. They fish the other side. This side, what, when I get out, out of the house when it rained. In June, when it rained, I'm looking at the water coming over. The water went over this side, on this side. Okay. Ms. Bennett, you've been here before to talk about that problem. Yeah, but the okay. water, yes, sir, but the water do not go up. Water normally doesn't go up, it goes, but, goes go down. But on this side, that's the side they fix. The side where I'm talking about when I, when it rain, it's water. Mm. I have to get out of the way, water, like, farm to work, evils, go to church, something like that when it rain. Okay, I'm gonna ask Keith Bonds, I, I saw you, would you mind uh, I know there was work that we did on that. Ms. Ms. Bennett's been here before. So we're going to ask Mr. Bonds to look into that for you, okay? Okay, but uh, I did talk to him about if he spray the stuff to keep the rocks and things from loose down. He said he just cleaned the dish out. I said, spray. He said, he might be suing. I said, sue for what? I just want the water to start coming on that place when I have to get out. Okay, we need to get over there and look at it. So let us do that for you, okay? Okay, all y'all can Thank you, ma'am. All right. <laughs> okay. Consent agenda, um, is there any item on consent agenda council would like to pull separately, I think? Item B. Ms. Cash has said item B she'd like to pull to discuss. Anybody, any other item? If not, may have a motion on the other items. Move to approve. Have a motion. Second. Second on favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed. Okay, item B is the resolution awarding a contract 
uh, to Southside Bank. Ms. Cash, you had a question? Yeah, I just wanted some additional clarification. I had a couple of questions about that um, regarding the process, um, how that takes place, and kind of how we select, because we're completely switching banks for the entire city, correct? Mm -hmm. Could you elaborate a little bit on the process for us, please? Ms. Sure. Um, this year, we actually used a consulting firm. So I'm going to have Bill Cook come up and talk to you about that. Okay. And who is Bill Cook? He is with Valley View. Okay. He is the consulting firm. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Good Mayor, evening. Uh, members of the council. I'm Bill Cook. I'm with Valley View Consulting. We are the city's investment advisory firm. And as part of our uh, scope of services to the city, we assist the city with the uh, bank solicitation process. It's a requirement that's governed by Chapter uh, 105 of the uh, Local Government Code, spells out pretty specifically the requirements for the solicitation. And a couple of them being it requires advertisement, requires notification of all the banks within the municipal boundaries, uh, requires uh, a, co a contract be entered into that's for a term no greater than, uh, than five years. And so working with the city staff, we developed a calendar so that uh, we could get through this process in time to have a new contract in place for the October 1st uh, 2013 uh, deadline when your current contract uh, rolls off. Um, we uh, did a review of all the banking services that the city utilizes, the volumes and the activities, and, uh, and then made a determination of some services that could be helpful to the city, that would be cost effective for them, and then uh, drafted a uh, request for application to be distributed to all of the banks that we could contact within the uh, municipal boundaries. Um, we sent that to them, and as a result of that uh, process, we had a pre-application conference, which was attended by some of the local banks, went over the, uh, the uh, request for application and uh, answered, uh, answered their questions. And then uh, by the deadline, we had received three uh, very competitive uh, applications. Uh, the incumbent, Capital One, uh, had, had done a good, a good job for the current contract and the previous contract. But the, uh, the application from Southside Bank was a, a better in terms of the best value criteria that were established at the onset of the uh, process. And, and so uh, with the, the transition being considered, it was important for staff to feel comfortable that the service that um, would be provided by uh, Southside Bank would meet their expectations and requirements. And so they uh, did a thorough reference check of, uh, of four references and, uh, and then also uh, had the bank come in and give a demonstration and presentation of their online system and, and capabilities. And there they found that the proposed system was a more robust and beneficial system than the one they'd been using with, uh, with Capital One. So in the bottom line, we ended up having a, uh, an application that was economically the most feasible for the benefit of the city and, uh, and, and had a ability to provide all the services and the online banking service for the city would be an improvement. Okay. And so on the strength of that, that was the reason that uh, it came to be that, uh, that uh, the uh, Southside Bank was the recommendation for okay. your okay. approval. Any other questions? No, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir, for being thank here. You. Okay. Thank you thank for you. explaining the process. Okay. Bye -bye. okay, if there's no other question, may I have a uh, uh, vote on that item? Move to approve. Have a motion. I'll second. Second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion passes. We have budget items. Mr. Willard discussed the proposed fiscal year 2013 2014 budget. I was going to ask if you're going to do that up there. I guess you're going to do that up there. <laughs> no. Thank you all for being here. Good job, guys. Okay, Sean. Uh, before we kind of throw it open to try to answer any questions that you might have to begin this budget uh, work session uh, from the last meeting, I wanted to do just a little bit of clarification, if I could, regarding the uh, compensation study and the market adjustment plan that we presented to you at the last meeting. Subsequent to the last meeting, there were uh, 
confusing, uh, a little confusion in the newspaper article that came out the next day, I think, and I won't quote it directly, but uh, essentially that all employees were going, it assumed all employees were going to get, if this was approved, an across the board pay increase, and that is not the case. And I wanted to clarify that a little bit tonight, and Longview News Journal did issue a clarification <laughs> on that fact. Uh, in fact, I think last week, one of the bullet points uh, in your presentation uh, outlined that very fact. But I wanted to take just a few minutes and go over the compensation study and to remind council uh, what we started in 2009 and kind of the, and not to get in the detail because we have volumes of detail and things like that, but I wanted to give you an overview of exactly what went into this compensation plan and what it is and what it is not. Uh, in 2009, we uh, contracted, council contracted with public se sector personnel consulting company, and they did a comprehensive study based on a market uh, compensation plan. I think council at that si time decided that this would be the way to go to uh, appropriately uh, compensate our employees for the city of Longview and have a more market-based approach to compensation. We uh, implemented part of that that year in 2009, and uh, it was quite costly, uh, but we implemented part of it. We could not implement the next year because the economy, as you remember, went down and we just uh, could not do that. Since then, Council's granted a couple of across-the-board pay raises, one being last April that went into effect that, that helped the thing along, but it was really not based on any market survey particularly. So in 2012, we asked public sector people to update to do the survey and see where we are in the marketplace. And in that process, we took 110 different job categories that we have in the city of Longview. Not every job category, but your main uh, job categories in all the divisions. And we went out and looked at 19 different cities uh, in the state of Texas, all across in our market, other markets, uh, all around the city. We also used, or I say we, the consulting firm used the regional and private sector data as well uh, in their calculations. And the outcome was that in the current pay ranges, pay ranges for 39 of these benchmark positions, uh, it shows that we're 5% or more below the prevailing market rates in those job ranges. An additional 62 positions were within 5% of the market rate. So the average variance of all these benchmark positions, we were 4% really behind the market in these, in these pay ranges. Compared in 2008, we were 13% behind. So the, what this tells you is that the across the board pay raises you granted in April and I think the year before that helped move us back up into the market uh, and then what we did in 2008. But, at this particular time, uh, the survey showed that we're still 5, uh, 4 percent behind the market in these job categories. And let me kind of, uh, this is I think a good slide to kind of explain where we're trying, what the market-based uh, approach to paying employees is. You'll see, uh, let's look first of all at uh, the blue range, the blue line, it's range 38. All of our jobs are numbered numerically by ranges. And so uh, in this particular range, this is for a senior equipment operator. And in our pay scale, that would be a range 38. And so you start at, uh, uh, what, a little more, between 29, around $30,000. And that's where an entry level employee today would come in at as an equipment operator. And then over the years, you would progress up uh, and along that continuum, and you top out at the top of the range 38. And that would be a function if you're here for a long time as an equipment operator, you don't promote, but you just stay in that particular job, and the city moves with the market or, or pay increases, you'll continue up that continuum until finally you top out at that pay range. So when we looked out and saw that currently, that pay range according to market for a senior operator needs to move to the market. So in, under this plan, it would move to what we'd call a range 40. 
So the range 40 is the, is the result of that 19 city survey for an equipment operator job. And so the market says that the new pay range would need to move. So let's say this employee was currently on the blue continuum getting 34,131 a year in that pay scale. To move that employee or that job to the market would have to, he'd have to, or she would have to go to a range 40, which would be 35,859. So the ranges move to what the market. Now this does not take into consideration an individual. This is strictly looking at the job category and the job. It's not a merit. We don't go in there. Now we have evaluation processes that we, we do every year, but this is just looking at a market range for that job based on 19 other cities. And we've, the theory behind it is we want, would like for our employees to be paid at market range, not the highest, not the lowest, but whatever the market is out there, that's what we're trying to get them to. So in this particular case, the plan would move that. Now there are some jobs that we have that will not move ranges because the market says that there's no need to move it up. They're at the market in that particular range, okay? For instance, here's just some different categories. Uh, our health inspectors, when we go that range, we're, they're seven and a half percent behind the market in that category. The library group, they're five to 10 percent behind. Solid waste, five percent behind. The municipal court category, five percent behind. Police operations, they're five to 10 percent behind in that range. So, is that the last slide? So what, what we have is that not everybody is going to get a pay raise. If that range doesn't move based on the market study and you're in that range, uh, that's, that's, you're at market. Now, if the, pay, if the study says that the range needs to move up based on the market, then you would move at the same position you are on that continuum to the next range that they recommend. So it's based on the market study. Not everybody, a lot of our employees in the job category they're in are in the proper range and there's no, they're at market or above. Mr. So. Willie, question. Um, I think what I heard you say was based on evaluation. In other words, if an employee didn't get a very favorable evaluation, you're not gonna automatically move them up to that range. Well, it I mean, depends it, on the evaluation. I mean, it, if, if they have to pass an initial, a basic evaluation, and if they pass that, then it, if they, if they have an unfavorable evaluation in that process, then that they wouldn't be eligible for that. But this I, just, I just want to make, make yeah, I, moves. I've heard that question asked to make sure that that. Well, let me back up. That's really more on, a, on an across the board pay raise. I probably didn't say that correctly. Somebody, is that right? Okay, let me correct that. On a, like we've been doing uh, the last couple of years, we had a, last year a 3% across the board. When we did that, everybody that passed their initial evaluation uh, got a 3% across the board. This does not look at the individual employee, it looks at the job category. So if that job category, if that pay range, all the employees on that pay range will move to that next pay range. So it does not contemplate, you know, the individual employee. Okay, I, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I think we really should look at, I mean, as part of that, uh, again, if, if you've got an unfavorable uh, performance evaluation right. um, and we're moving people up in range, even though they've, one, one problem we work. have is that our evaluations are done on employee hire date. And so that's all throughout the year. We're doing employee evaluations now, you know, so we have to work on the timing of all that. But yep. uh, questions. This is designed oh, oh, to move the range. Hold on a second. Mr. Frost, and then I'll come back over to Cash. Uh, is this, this process you're doing? Uh, way I'm standing, you're bringing people to market now who are below market, regardless of their value. In other words, they're in this job and it's below up here, they need to be up here to yes. be competitive. Right. 
Yeah. Right. It's that's right. Let's move back to those two graphs. I, I, excuse me, just one second. Before you go anywhere, I have another question. So let's okay. hold off on the slides over there. <laughs> That was kind of similar to what I was going to ask because if, if we're moving people up to market, because I, I don't, I, I wasn't on the council in 2009 and I don't necessarily agree with that particular step. And I say that because if we're moving people up to market, what's the incentive to have a merit increase? if we're automatically going to do that and if we're going to continue this process. So I, I agree with the mayor as well. I'm a little concerned and I'd also like to ask of those 19 cities um, that we were compared to, did was the did we look at the cost of living comparisons? Because our cost of living is great here. And some of those other cities of comparable sizes, perhaps their cost of livings may be a little bit higher. I'm just curious to know those other variables that kind of were taken into account during that process. There was taken into account. Okay. Ms. Heiko is not here tonight. She's out, so I'm a little behind the curve a little bit on that. That's but, okay. And uh, I have another question. Uh -huh. The example of the senior equipment operator, is that a high is that an hourly or is that a salaried position? A salaried position. And and the reason that I'm asking, it's I, I thought uh, that it was hourly. I would think okay, it's I hourly. thought it was hourly. And the reason that I'm asking is because I have reviewed, I've been asking for a lot of information and I reviewed it all. And I'm seeing some some patterns because you know, when we look at our hourly people, I really believe we have a responsibility to, if they're doing a good job, um, to fairly reward them. I, I don't necessarily believe that we always have to move with the market, per se. So that's my general concern. Um, I do think merit and performance play a huge role. And I also think that using the market to uh, select which employees may be eligible to or need to move up, I think that's somewhat subjective. Um, we have to have some benchmark, whether it's the market or just your preference or whatever. It has to really be, I mean, you just can't go willy-nilly right, out there. Right, absolutely, you have to have and, a, and that's not at all what I'm saying, but what I am suggesting is that perhaps we need to reevaluate the system okay. so that we are taking into consideration employee performance. Because I would like to see us go back to some form of merit-based um, increase. I believe that's how you retain people. Uh, because there are some salaried people that are in line for these market increases. There are some hourly people. And, and I've taken a good look at it and, and reviewed it again. And, and I'm a little concerned about that because I think that we also have some positions that are well above market and there are some substantial gaps. If you don't base it on categories. market, what would you base your benchmark on as a rep? As I told you so. a couple of days ago, I don't know. That's why we have staff. And, and so I'm looking for suggestions um, instead of saying we have to do it this way. I'm just, I'm looking for fairness across the board because I believe that people are, should be rewarded if they do a good job. So that's okay. just kind of where I'm at. I, I mean, I understand, I understand that there's, there's a benchmark in, in just like in our businesses. I mean, we know, we know pretty much where the, right. the market is high, lows and indifference. And, you know, when you're, when you're making a decision, you know, in a hire and, and in a performance evaluation, you, you, you're looking at a number of factors, including how well is that person performing. And, 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 uh, and when you're bringing somebody new on, it's, it's, you do look at, you know, the, the cost of living and, and all Absolutely. these other things, you know, compared to uh, where maybe some of your other uh, competitive markets might would be. So, okay. Mayor, uh, I, I want to add something else. You brought up a valid point um, because we have some well, very but one thing. One thing I want to make clear is we got to have a start point absolutely. somewhere. And, and, and the reason we did that study back in 09 because we went year after year after year and it was one of those you throw up against the wall and you see if it's stuck. We didn't right. really have, you know, a systematic or strategic approach to how we do that. Okay. And when we're going to you know, when we're going to recruit and retain, we do have to have some. But I, I do agree with you in that there's, you know, additional things that got to be weighed in right. on this to, to really make this a good, fair, comprehensive uh, way of doing things. Go and ahead, the I'm only sorry. thing I want to add, and, and I agree with that, that's exactly what I'm saying, is that what I've found is that we have employees that are being told they're at the maximum pay in a defined category according to the benchmark. And some of these employees have been with the city for a great number of years. And whether they promote it or not, should we just say, well, we can't even do a merit increase? Not, not, we, not saying we that we do that last year. We did, we do that. We right. did that last year. Uh, exactly. Yeah. But to compensate for what happened in 2010, just, just an example. Well, you know? so 
a person, this is a perfect example of what it shows. If, if a person's here long enough and you get raises along and all that, it's going to end up at the top of that continuum. That's the outside range. So, you know, when you get it across the board, it'll extend that out. And those, but there's no more progression unless you promote to another job well, or, exactly. the, or the range The only moves. thing that you and I discuss this, David, I mean, the, the only thing you get to is, you know, we have, we have people that are maybe, let me use the word grossly, but people that are maybe considerably undercompensated and we have some number of people that are considerably overcompensated for whatever reasons. Yeah, and and that's almost, a different subject. <laughs> I know, but I'm. But yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, if we if we froze because they're so so much overpaid, and got away from that across the board raise yeah. situation, which means, irregardless, you get a raise. But if you got got away with that or from that, maybe you could ca have the the funding to catch up with the people that are really lagging considerably. And, and even with this particular study, we may not be able to catch them yeah. up, you know, to a, 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 a good mid-range, okay? Yeah. So. And what we'd need to determine is where do you want to freeze it? Do you want to not pay people above the midpoint and for a while and just pay those that are below the, you know, the first two or three rungs there? I mean, it, you know, you get into all, if you're going to, if you've got people that are overpaid, right, if that's what we're saying, then we have, need to have a cutoff and Absolutely. decide where you want, who you want to pay and who you don't want to pay. Well, it's not about is deciding that, who we want to pay and who we don't want yeah. to pay, but it is, I'm sorry to interrupt Well, there, what job category but, you want to pay exactly. and Exactly, and what is the maximum pay and what is, you yeah. know, based on tenure, I, you know, again, it goes back to staff. That's why we have, you know, and consultants rather. One of the things I'd, I'd recommend is, is, okay, so the term overpaid, okay, are they 10% above market, 20% above market, 50% above market? I think you'd almost have to look at. Well, there again, what's our benchmark? We're, we've got it tied. This is a market. Well, your plan. benchmark you're saying is just, is the 2009 comp compensation study. This is the benchmark. And, 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 the bench it was, and it was renewed in 2012, so that's sort of your benchmark there is is yeah. you know as far as what they're saying in those specific jobs for instance be the, the benchmark right now for this equipment operator is going to make thirty four thousand dollars now is he overpaid not according to the market okay now, if he's say, overpaid because we don't want to but let's say because of tenure because across the board everything is that person's sitting up at forty three thousand mm -hmm. dollars now what He's within the market. Right. Well, he'll go. He would go to the, wherever that. If he's at 43, he'd move to the red line at the same position. So whatever. I just use that as an example. You know, for somebody in the, midway through, somebody's been here. I don't know, eight or ten years, and moved up the line there. If you go to market, that person in that job would move to the 35,000. That would be the next range according, to, and then that person would be paid according to the market. And, and you know, this is kind now, of. Now, if they're up, anywhere along that continuum, they're behind the market. Yeah, this is a little bit unfair because the oil field wreaks havoc on people like this well, equipment operator. Sorry. <laughs> so that 43 is probably not a great salary compared what to what they right pay. There, and again, that needs to be. But in the oil field, these people get 35, 859. Is that right? Well, well he was saying probably there, more so. than that because most of our yeah. most yeah, of our is, data is, is municipal data, is municipal and it put a little bit in there. I've so. got Gary in the coming, Mr. Gary. Uh, for example, Mr. Wolf, when I get to the top of my pay range, say for example, an equipment operator. Okay. Uh, do I get any more merit increases after that? Uh, do Depends I on if, if we do an across the board pay raise like we've done the last two or three years. <laughs> then, if you're at the very top. You would get a, a instead of going up, we'd either have to move the range up to accommodate that, or to we've been typically paying someone a one-time payment, the same amount, say it's a three percent. They would get a one-time three yeah. percent that doesn't go into the base. Okay. okay, so that keeps it on the unless the range moves. That's the only way we can come once they get up to the very top. And, that, and that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I mean, if, if I'm already forty-three thousand with that three percent, I'm I'm gonna go above that. Yeah, you, the, yeah. If you're granted a three percent raise, you would get the three percent even if you're at the maxed out there. It, you right. just get it in a one-time lump sum. One-time lump. Okay, yeah. that's what. And I that, that keeps it. 
We okay, got well, some employees that one, have been. Oh, excuse me one second. Excuse me one second. I got I got somebody right. over here, and I'll come back to you. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. 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 Keep, Thank you. Keep everybody in the. Loop. All right. Go ahead. Uh, on either of your scale, your blue or your red, you're starting at say 30, 31, 32, 33, and then you're moving up gradually. Uh, what moves that individual up from that, you know, call them squares, triangles, circles, or whatever, there's about 12 of them on there, I think. An across the board pay range or a market adjustment, either one. Any, anytime you'd get a pay increase of any kind, it would move the employee up that scale at some point. Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't say that. Well, I mean, if it'd be any an increase, if you're getting $34,000 and you grant a 3% increase, that Where gives them more money. Uh, no, 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 no. Where does merit pay okay. adjustment come in there? In other words, what I'm hearing you say is that guy moves up if he's doing a good job, bad job, or okay. whatever. Hold, hold on one second. We don't have a true merit system here. Hold in on one second. Um, now, that'd be a complete... Mary, I, let, let me just... Uh, earlier, Mr. Willard said that um, an across-the-board merit raise means that that employee, to get the 3%, would have had to have been in good standing uh, we have an on their uh, performance evaluation in that situation, because I remember that. Yeah. Well, that's right. In other words, he's doing he's doing his job, but he's not doing a superb job, or he's not doing a better job than the other guy is. In other words, as long as you're as long as you're medium, as long as you're not upsetting the apple cart, you keep moving up, but you don't really do you not. Uh, what, what are you do What are you doing? To well, that keep gets you back to more up? of a management problem. You know. You got to you need to be supervising their employees. There, there are and, people. There, there are people and, out there that at the thirty-five thousand range or the forty thousand dollar range, that uh, five years from now are not going to be doing any more work than they're doing right now. So I, I have a, a, a cost of living raise. Yes, I can understand that. But when you just start giving raises, depending on how long you've been here, you get more money every year. Well, I'm just going to sit back and do the same thing I did last year, next year, and the year after, because I know every year I'm getting more money and I'm not doing any more performance than I did the year before. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. Ms. Cash. I know we have to have a benchmark. This is the last thing I'm going to say, but I would like to, uh, to ask, I don't know that we're necessarily tied and committed to this, so perhaps we can look at within maybe for the next fiscal year. I, I, you know, I can't speak on behalf of council, only the mayor can do that. But I'd like to see some, some, uh, some alternatives. And if we truly have a consulting firm that's doing this, I, I would like to see what the firm, what suggestions they offer. I'm, I'm not really interested in a lot of staff input. I'd like to see what an outside firm would suggest we do. Um, or, or if there are any suggestions to that try they have. to try to maybe round it out a little bit more. Absolutely, with taking into consideration merit. In and I say that because when we when we begin to use our own employees, the process becomes diluted. And so I believe that we should maybe, except for the city manager, of course. But I, I would like to see that in the future, please. Okay. Um, one, one, let, me, let me let me mention one other thing. I I was thinking about when uh, Sydney was talking in in. That example of the of the across the board raise that we did year before last summer, I think it was two percent, maybe three. Two. Well, we did three last year, but, but two percent, I think. Before yeah, but the I mean, the, the, based on that study in 2012 or 2009, we were 13 percent behind market, so we were double digit behind. So, but but as we close that gap now. Now the merit discussion and, and those other things become even more significant right. because you're, you're, you're trying to get the people that are really doing a good job Absolutely. that are, man, they're, they're, they're re really doing an outstanding job. I mean, you want to, I'd, I'd rather see them between midpoint and maximum, not, you know, get, 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 get them. Money so what to about people, people that are job. overpaid, and, and how are we going to determine who's well, overpaid? Well, you know, do they you know what get I'd a like to see, David, what I'd really like to see on that, and, and I think you and I discuss this just briefly, um, and not to put any of those employees on the spot, but I'd, I'd really like to see, I mean, we saw through the newspaper how many, the number of people that were either below range or something. Mm -hmm. 
T tell us how many positions or what the positions are of the people that are overcompensated at this point. Oh. And it's not their fault. I mean, they've been here for a long time, maybe, or... Well, that's my... We don't, I don't know what overcompensated means. Well, I'm, I'm saying if you if using your benchmark... Okay. Above okay, the 50% mark? Yeah. I mean, there's some amount of people we keep talking about that are uh, termed overcompensated base, uh, uh, as compared to the study. And I, I would just you know, like to know what what are those positions and and how how are they overpaid? Okay. Another way you can look at that, if you've got thirty five, eight fifty nine. If you've got a fellow that's been here five or six years and he's making thirty five, eight fifty nine and he's running a backhoe and you've got another fellow that's making forty one thousand that's running a backhoe and been here ten years and he's really not performing as good as the guy that's making thirty five, that's overpaid. Pure and simple. You have to look at performance. There has to be some kind, and I, and I apologize for you having to be up here tonight when Ms. Heiko's not here. You have to have some kind of form for merit pay. You just can't keep everybody on a graduated scale going up uh, when they when they when they don't do any more than they did five years ago. What was Sydney? What what he was talking about? But we we've got to manage those people. We we we, we have well, to we have. Well, we got to have a merit pay. Well, we've I understand, and, and that's what we've discussed, and yeah. and that's 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 what we're talking about. But also, that supervisor, that manager, that director has to do their job, looking at the person underperforming, that, exactly the person right. overperforming. They have to. They have to report that, and, and they and have to write that up. As and part the, of that, as I part think the manager uh, should have the primary responsibility of deciding who gets the merit raise or who gets the raise and who does not. That should be Well, we've done that. I mean, done. that's and that has been the case in the past because they had to be in good standing. You well, know. good standing just means you're doing your job, but are you doing it better no, than no, the no. other guy? Are you doing more production? Are you, are you taking, if, what's your rating with the people that you, that you work with at uh, Citizens? Uh, you know, there, there's always numbers to write uh, everything, if, but you just have to sit down and decide how you're going to do it. Okay. All right, Richard? I think we're making some assumptions up for Mr. Wheeler, and I apologize for that. Yeah. Um, I, I make the assumption that you and your staff know what you're doing, and uh, I also assume that if you have someone that's not performing well, that they're not going to get an automatic pay raise. Is that a reasonable assumption? Yes, sir. Yeah. So you're actually managing that from well, your we're level trying, to I'm not. I can't stand up here and tell you that all 850 employees that we have I'm not are doing that. a good job. I'm just saying the philosophy that the you put in place. The philosophy is if they have to pass a simple right yeah. now. now it's not a true merit in the form of trying to gauge what Mr. Allen's trying to do. That's we not have what I'm speaking to. I'm talking about management, as you said earlier. All right. What's your question, then? I'm assuming that you have counseled your execs that report to you, and they have counseled the supervisors that report to them, that there's a process to manage people, um, like Mr. Allen's example. Yes. If you have two people with the same amount of tenure, they don't necessarily get the same pay if they're not doing the same job because they've been counseled. That's what we expect them to do. Okay. And perhaps their pay would have been not necessarily uh, um, increase the same way another person with the same tenure would be. Depends on what those evaluations right. they've so done. So you're managing that situation. We're trying That's to do the that. first okay. question. Second question. Okay. Excuse me, Richard. Can I, can I just, yeah. on, on that point, yeah. okay. But, but what, what they're saying is, is if that person on this particular program right here, if that person, you know, has, you know, I, I mean, if that person's been evaluated not doing quite as good a job as this person, but in this in this particular case, they're still going to be moved up if that. they're behind the range. Okay, I, I just yeah, want to make I, sure that the, 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 I guess the flaw, if there is one in the way we're doing it now, is that if it, if they pass a simple evaluation, a basic evaluation, they get moved up. It doesn't take into account if this guy, if they both pass it, but this guy's doing a little bit better, they're both going to get the same rate. Right. I get okay, that. and that's just okay. part. So, that's the part of the way you. Again. Oh. oh. I have go ahead. Part. Go ahead. That's, the, that's the part. That's the part of when you deal with a system like this. I get that. Yeah. All right. Now we can. Second question. Well, change why? That. Why are you bringing this to the council? What was the impetus for you want to bring this as part of your budget? Well, we had questions from council. I was trying to answer some of those questions in the newspaper article. No, I mean the the, the market. Bring it to this this increase, this change in ranges. Was it your idea? Was it from council? Was it, came, it was well, it employees? came from uh, from. Uh, Ms. Heiko's group and personnel that we started this, we haven't been able to get back to it since 2009, and so we wanted to try to get everybody at least to market. Okay, I'll make an assumption. Now, I assume then we were having feedback from either people that were employed here or people perhaps who were trying to employ that didn't come to work for us because our range perhaps wasn't as high. 
as other cities? Was that the reason why Ms. Heiko was bringing it to you in 09? Yes. That 13% yeah, we were 14 percent behind, and we had been doing things. We wanted to do a pay okay. study to see when we how we were stacked up between the markets. Yeah, so. Okay. Uh, okay. So that was the impetus behind. Last it. question. So you've uh, you've been able to accomplish this within the budget you presented to us, and the dollars you present. So it's no additional cost over and above. No, this was in the budget that it's we within presented. the budget. Yeah. And the cost of this estimate uh, estimated to be. What we've got. What, Marianne? Eight hundred, uh, almost nine hundred grand, but you're still you're still able to do all of that. Make sure I'm clear on this, and basically bring your budget in pretty darn close to what last year's budget was. Am yes, I right? Sir. That's right. Okay, thank you. That's all I had. Okay, sit. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, first off, David, I want to apologize again. Uh, I realize I realize Ms. Heiko is here. I guess what I'm trying to get to, or trying to get around to, or that's not very good English, but uh, we're going to be hiring a new personnel manager uh, and 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 certainly i would just my intentions of this discussion is if that person would put in some type of merit pay raise or merit what is merit what you know just to take just to merit performance merit, uh, merit some type of merit system to where once a year we don't say well if you didn't mess up, you're going to get another raise. You know, if I, it just uh, there are people out there that do better jobs, and there are people out there that do less, and that's just human nature. And I think we need to reward that person that does a better job. And I would, my hope would be that we put uh, that we put some kind of system in place that would do that. Okay. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, what else do we have, Mr. Willard? Did you have anything else? Not Any other questions? Whatever the council had. Council's no, had no, the no, opportunity no. to review the um, uh, budget items, and is there any other item we want to discuss at this time? Okay, Mr. Willard, thank you very much. So we have a second item, and that is the new simplified, simplified. simplified. Collection and recycling proposal. We have Dwayne Archer tonight. Thank you, Council Mayor. If y'all have any questions, that's, I just want to be available for questions as we move forward. Um, I know some change in the way we do things, so I know that you might have some questions from uh, some of your citizens in your area. So I just want to be we, available. Uh, we had a town hall meeting Tuesday night, and Miss nobody, nobody said anything mm -hmm. at all. And Mr. Frost, who hosted the meeting, asked the uh, question, and we had probably 40 people roughly in there. Um, how many recycled, and I saw very few hands that didn't go up. Now, when asked if they had the big container or the little one, Mixed. pretty much, I think myself and a couple other people had the big container. <laughs> I still got mine, by the way. Okay. It hadn't disappeared. Good. Yeah. Okay. Not two of them. So. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> um, I think we need to keep getting the information out there and uh, you know personally the way things are looking right now I think it's a it's a good program for the community so we'll keep uh, we'll keep our eyes and ears open okay mr. Richard and then since your last appearance for the council what are you have you heard um, from citizens I have not had I've had one negative email and they just said I don't like it and, and at the bottom they said I don't like the big cart and then I answered that and I said well you won't have to use it and then uh, then the response was oh okay well I'm okay with it um, most of the calls we receive in the office are when do I get my cart that seems to be the the consensus is just when do I get it because I'm excited about getting have you ordered them no <laughs> we'll order them once you tell us to Another question. Well, if, okay, go ahead. Um, Rich. One of the things that came up, I, I was uh, at the Kiwanis Club meeting this morning making a presentation, and uh, people were asking questions. This came up, actually, the first question. And uh, a little bit of a concern about going just to once a week. I told them what you had shared with us about how the trash dropped off by more than 50% in the second pickup in most neighborhoods. But the question was okay, but if I'm a really trashy person and I need more, uh, can I get a second tub? Should I call for bulky item pickup? What's our solution if someone has routinely more than one trash can full? We, we don't want to offer multiple cans at the initial in, uh, launch because we want to get those carts out and then we'll have a 
a, a period where people can order if they'd like to, and we'll probably maybe establish some small fee if somebody needed a second one. Um, and in the meantime, we'll have a large roll-off available at the compost. Uh, we're also looking at some other options to make it available so that if a person just had some trash and need to get rid of it, there was options for them. But there will certainly be something at the compost site, the new compost site. Okay. Well, tell me if I said the wrong thing because what I told him was you can take the two big canisters down there and if you have more trash, just have it in a black pa oh. plastic bag like we do now and the guy will have to hop off the back and throw it in the back, correct? Yes, sir. Yes. If but they have a hundred bags, set it at the curb and we'll take care of it. Nothing will well, change that's a really about the amount person. Of they got that many. <laughs> yeah. We get it. Who are you hanging out with, bud? <laughs> we Chuck get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody rakes their yard. There can be a lot of bags, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank yeah. you. All right. I'll come back. I had right. Mr. Mr. Archer. Allen. If a person does not want the large tub and they want to continue with the, uh, as they're doing now, uh, how do they notify you that they do not want the large 90 gallon tub? Well, we're, we're kind of planning that part out, uh, but there will be some method for them to notify us before delivery and so that the delivery company will know not to deliver there. Okay. Um, if, if for some reason the cart ends up at someone's home, there'll be a number they can call and we'll go collect that back up. It's All right, something we mentioned several times before. Uh, if, if my pickup day is Monday or my pickup day is Friday and I've got a long weekend, I'm out of town on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, have we worked up besides going to the uh, have we, or do we have any kind of process in work where I could get mine picked up on a day that's not my day or how, how do we if I miss my Monday and, and my wife doesn't want two weeks of that smelly stuff out there in the tub well, that's one of the things that you know me and you have talked about some yes. options yeah and um, right now we have established that will definitely happen is the roll off at the uh, at the compost but we are looking at some op options um, of course we'd like to it, like to keep everybody on schedule that's if right we can. I understand if we, don't if we get off schedule then it gets it. costly for us to, yeah. to actually no we don't want it. them to take advantage of it and just start calling every day and right say, that would you be miss tough. me now right. come get it but the compost side if you're driving from uh, north side of uh, Longview is a, is a pretty good distance you know but anyway yes, those are the two uh, the biggest concern I think I've, that the people express to me is if they miss their day, what do they do? And, and that's, that's, I mean, we haven't answered that yet, but I think that's the biggest concern I've run into. And, and normally it will be just like it is now. You call us and we'll get it taken care of. I mean, we, we, we are about serving our customers. Well, so if we know yeah. there's an issue with someone, we're going to figure out a way to take care of it. Mr. Garrett. Mr. Archie, I'm still confused about the bulk pickup. Yes. Sir. Uh, is it going to be picked up the same day at the recycling and the sanitation going to be picked up? The idea about simplifying is this, is your trash day, your recycling day, and your bulky item day are all going to be the same days. Do I have to like call that in or take a picture? Right now we would like to continue with the call in. We are working on a system. One of the, one of the issues that we have is we have three trucks. And so if we drove the route, we could do it with three trucks. But the problem is we pick up junk which ends up at the landfill. And we also pick up limbs that ends up in the compost site. So one of the issues that we have to kind of work through is how to logistically do that where we're actually just routing and so checking the street to see what's available. Um, the initial plan is that this would be, we would be, we'd have a list of those that have been identified. Uh, we would also have the calls of those some, some customers, but the idea would be to come out of an area and it would be completely cleaned out and even even uh, without a customer having to call us. So okay. we're working on that because that's what we, that was the plan all along, but the volumes that we're seeing um, just kind of created a situation where we had to kind of move this direction. So, but we're, we're working okay. on that. We want, we want a solution. Ms. Casher? I was just going to inquire about the bulky item pickup. I know we talked about maybe asking for, you know, were we going to need more trucks or in order to really enhance that service. And uh, uh, Mr. Smith already, I'm so, I'm so used to calling him by his first name. <laughs> Mr. Smith already uh, um, inquired about that as well. So, I, I, you know, I'm calling in because I really think I'd like to see us move forward with yes, making that service more productive. And, and let me add this. Um, in, in the budget this year, we have one vehicle that we're going to replace that's right. a dump body truck and it'll be replaced with a bulky item truck. 
and it will be staged, uh, well, it'll go to the front line and one of the other units will go to a reserve state status at the compost. So if we end up with lots of calls and we need to adjust, we can put a driver in it and put them out there and set, put four trucks on the road. Okay. So I think that'll help a lot with that. Mr. Archer, we appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Zoning public hearing item A to consider application Z1307. Mr. Shirley. Thank you, Mayor Dean, members of council, Mr. How's Will. the drums? Collecting dust. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the applicant, Mr. Pertle, is requesting a rezone of approximately uh, 1.58 acres uh, of the PP rain survey and 1.13 acres in the David Hill survey uh, from single family SF42 office. This is located on Hollybrook. Let me get to the map. It's this um, here just uh, outside of uh, Northeastman Road. There's an existing house on part of the property, and this is the vacant property that's between the walking trail and the city drainage detention area. Um, as you can tell, the uh, future land use map for this entire area is designated as low intensity business with some uh, residential to the south and then uh, medium intensity and low intensity over to the east. Um, Hollybrook Drive is a collector. We're currently doing some work on that to upgrade it because of that fact, uh, which is appropriate for office and residential. Uh, collector roads are low to moderate capacity roads that serve to move traffic from local streets to arterials. Uh, which Hollybrook does over to North Eastman Road. Um, f staff finds that the proposed zoning change is consistent with the land use plan and the, and the area, uh, and staff does recommend approval. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission did not recommend approval. Uh, they, there was not a formal motion that was seconded and approved, so there was lack of a motion for an approval. So it does require a uh, three-fourths vote for any kind of approval on this item, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions? This item, okay, you want to do that now, or hang on one second, or do we want to do the, um, this is a public hearing. You want to have the public hearing first? Yeah. Okay. We're going to go to the public hearing first, and uh, uh, public hearing is now open. David Yao. 